All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Creator Lunch and Learn from the American Influencer Council. We're going to be discussing staycation, vacation, and the global pandemic and how it has redefined travel as we know it. Um, this segment is presented to you by the AIC Learning and Development Committee. If some of you are just joining about the American Influencer Council, it's a non not-for-profit membership trade association in the U.S. led by and for career creators. The council champions the interests of all of us as career, career creators, and it's at the forefront of the global rise for on-demand and authentic digital content. Um, they encourage travel creators to be mindful of ethical tourism. So ethical tourism implies considering the consequences of your action as a tourist on the environment, local community, and local economy. Um, it's now more important than ever before, and especially understanding the, like, like I just said, the impact on the environment and local community. And, especially post pandemic, how we're going to give back to these local communities that have been pretty devastated by a lack of tourism. So today, here's the rundown of what we're, we're going to be doing um, is we're going to be discussing code resources for creators in the AIC resource hub. We're going to be discussing the public's perception to travel and the travel content that we're creating. We're going to be discussing the great pivot of 2020, something we, I know, whatever industry you're in, you might have felt that. Um, traveling locally, diving into our camera roll, and our travel predictions of 2021. And then we're going to have about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. So definitely drop that in the Q&A box, guys. Um, I'm really excited hear from you. I know my panelists are as well. So I'm going to get started with introducing the panelists. Uh, we're going to just do one minute for introductions. As I said, I'm Anaya Richards. I am a travel writer and digital content creator. Um, I started when I was about 16 in the industry as the as a founding contributor of Team Vogue magazine and use fashion as my caveat for travel. So I've been featured in Forbes, um, have done work for Travel and Leisure, Condé Nast Traveler, Pop Sugar, even um, Meghan Markle's blog, The Tig, when she had that, and have been on things like CBS This Morning and other uh, web TV shows. Uh, great, and it's great to be here. So I guess we'll get started with you, Alana. I'm going down my screen. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Alona. I am a travel writer, content creator in the travel space, as well as a philanthropist. Um, I started in this industry kind of by accident. I was working full time, uh, had the means to travel, didn't have the time to travel, started traveling on long weekends, uh, got picked up by large publications, Business Insider, Forbes, Travel and Leisure, Elite Daily, etc. Um, they interviewed me. I was kind of perfect for the demographic of their readers. My blog took off, my social media took off, people started slowly following my footsteps, doing these long weekend trips. Um, and then I kind of just tapped into the business opportunity and I resigned from my career in finance, started traveling full time, started doing my charity work full time and the rest is history. <laughs> Whew, 60 seconds. <laughs> <That was> really <laughs> <good. laughs> okay, what about you? Uh, mine is Travel Babo, B A B B O, and it means travel dad. And yeah, I was in healthcare forever since since graduate school for about 18 years and just never had a passion for it at all. Um, finally, I was like, okay, the next half of my life, I want to do something different. And I loved travel, I loved photography, um, and I was always traveling with my kids. Um, I won a Connie Nest Traveler uh, Photo of the Year contest uh, several years ago. and, and was a $25,000 prize, but mainly I was excited because I wanted to go to New York and meet the, the writers of the magazine, these people that I had always followed and who had inspired me. And so I did and and looked around the, the, the Condé Nast offices and I was like, this is totally like, okay, this is the time I need to, to change and do something that I'm passionate about. So maybe six months, a year later, I, I finally just did it. I got fed up with work. I, I quit just all of a sudden, jumped into travel writing. Um, and that was about six years ago and haven't looked back. I, I loved simply inspiring people and, and, and showing people that they can spend a lot less than Disneyland and take their kids to, you know, Chile or something and, and, <laughs> and get them some culture. So, uh, so yeah, that's my quick story. And then Tanika. 
Hi everyone. My name is Tanika Renee. Uh, my Instagram is my name. I produce content. Um, it's not mainly for social media. So I use my social media to share my content with my Instagram family. Um, we basically are rewriting the black narrative within travel. Um, you know, thank God for social media because the black narrative hasn't been able to be shared from our perspective. So that's what my social media is for me. And Skinny. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Karsten Tannis, also known as Skinny Was Here on Instagram. I am a director and a photographer that specializes in lifestyle and fashion, including travel, because that's a very huge part of uh, all of those pillars. Um, I got my start as a freestyle uh, BMXer, so I was a sponsored athlete that traveled throughout the States. And then once I got, you know, once I outgrew the bike, you know, I jumped on the camera and just continued that adventure. So there's always a lust for life, but usually it's uh, taking detours from working with uh, a lot of hospitality clients. So even though I'd be on assignment creating content for them, I would always take at least two trips for myself. So that's how we started. Nice. I love that. Well, thank you so much for to all of you guys for being here. I know we definitely appreciate it. Uh, one of the first things we wanted to start with is that there are COVID resources for creators in the AIC Resource Hub. So this has information from the CDC, the WHO, um, it runs the gamut, but proper science information for us. And also it's helpful, I guess, for us in terms of sharing with our followers, because I know a lot of us um, kind of also feel like the CDC lately too and having to get correct information out there and good information out there and it's it's definitely important so so the AIC resource hub has a lot of that helpful information out there for us um, and in terms of best practices for travelers in general um, like many of us encourage and we're going to go into it with each of you because you guys have both, all have been doing really amazing jobs about, about on that conveying that information but we should be checking with the U.S. State Department for travel advisories before booking flights don't travel if you have symptoms take a PCR diagnostic test um, with time in between to get your trip results I live between New York and Italy and I just booked a flight to go back to my other home and, and at the end of this month and for my flight with Alitalia, I have to board with a COVID test taken within 48 hours of my flight. And there is um, a testing site within not just the airport, but in the terminal in JFK. So that kind of stuff is is really important. And I think I believe, I'm, I just found out today that I if I land in Rome and I take a COVID test there, then I, I can forego the quarantine period, but they have curfews there. So I'm not really trying to go out anyway. <laughs> um, we should all be checking with the Centers for Disease Rec Control and Prevention and regarding on how to self quarantine if your destination requires it and wear a mask, sanitize your hands and keep six feet apart from others. And so, yeah, let's jump into the conversation about it. I know Eric, you worked in healthcare for 18 years prior, like you said, um, and prior to becoming a travel creator. How did that professional experience help you navigate the space of travel this year? Like what have been the precautions that you've taken, especially traveling with your family to guarantee that your trips were done responsibly? Um, it's funny because obviously travel creation hasn't had the best year um, with, with travel plummeting um, and ironically my old job, um, it was a nurse advice over the telephone so I wasn't on the medical side, I was on the operational side. So I think that my business background it kind of helped me prepare for this year in, in the way that I kind of set up my business originally six years ago. I jumped, like I said, I jumped into travel writing kind of overnight. Um, and didn't really know what I was doing, but I went to some conferences, some TBEXs, um, looked at the people that I thought were successful and, and what they were doing and, and chose a path accordingly. And, and instead of going the kind of SEO, advertising affiliate route that a bunch of people did, I went for the brand building. 
I really worked on getting authority. I, I, I wanted to be known as like the, one of the world's leading family travelers. And I think that that really helped me into this year. Not that I was, uh, you know, able to see into a crystal ball, but it meant that I wasn't reliant on web revenues or views or anything else, but I had that authority out there and I had the media, um, you know, the, the articles about me. And so I found that, that I was still getting a lot of inquiries from brands over the, the course of the year just based on, on, on the authority that I had built. And, and it was fun doing campaigns this year that, that I could do you know, with, with content that I had created years ago or whatever. And, and none of my campaigns involved travel. Um, none of them really, I guess one of them involved uh, the healthcare side, ironically, and, and kind of cleanliness as it related to hotels. So that all kind of started to um, kind of weave together a little bit. Um, but as far as like traveling with my kids, it was a lot of road tripping and it was the standard precautions you just talked about, the six feet and then the staying away from other people if we could, you know, get renting cabins um, and not being in, in more crowded hotel lobbies, that type of thing and, and masks everywhere. Like, like I, um, I think we did five round trips between California and Colorado um, because we were selling a house in Colorado. So we just kept moving stuff back. And, and we chose routing, you know, based on, on what looked best, on where people were, were behaving the best. So, so yeah, it was an interesting year as far as healthcare and, and travel kind of colliding, but, um, but yeah, we made the best of it still. That's really, that's awesome. And I've been, I've loved watching your feed and seeing you travel with your kids and especially traveling in the U.S. with your kids. I'm a person, I've traveled so many countries and driven cross country in other countries but I haven't really done that in exactly. where I'm from and so it's been really awesome and inspirational seeing you and your family doing that so well, thanks. Um, one of the things that we always say um, about travel increasing like we just said about the risk of uh, chances of getting and spreading COVID um, Elena you are really diligent about your research um, documenting safety precautions in your in feed, in feed and within your stories. Um, but with that in mind, something all of us might have experienced, um, I will talk to it with some, of, uh, some other people afterwards, but there are many people who are quick to travel shame. So what are some lessons you learned in terms of business ethics as, as a travel creator and your responsibility to the community, to your brand partners? Sure, that, that's a great question. So I want to preface by saying that the start of the pandemic, I was very, very clear on my stance. Do not travel. In fact, do not leave your house at all. When information was scarce, when everything was still developing, I was literally one of those people. I did not leave the house. I was sanitizing all the packages that came to the house. My mm -hmm. father is a doctor. He's a frontline worker. I live in New York City. As you know, like we've literally witnessed hell during the peak of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, I think that collectively we did a great job of understanding what we could do to mitigate the spread while also living our lives and not, you know, decimating our local economy uh, like we essentially did. And when brands started slowly reaching out and kind of testing the waters, asking how I feel about travel, what I know about the travel space, how they're maintaining safety protocols and things like that. I had a responsibility to listen to them. And the more information, the more studies came out, the more I learned about what hotels are doing, what airlines are doing, um, it became my responsibility to kind of tell my audience the same thing, right? And for some reason, when people imagine travel or air travel in particular, they automatically think, you know, COVID is just flying through the cabin and everyone's getting sick. and. The, the main thing that people say is you're spreading COVID when you travel. And like, I simply beg to differ. It's not, you know, that's not a correct statement. Um, like even for example, Qatar's latest study had 99.988% of passengers traveling COVID free on board. That's 4.6 million passengers across almost 40,000 flights. 99.988% were uh, COVID free. You know, so there you go. That's just one simple stat. So when I travel, when I talk about travel, um, I've had just a few trips recently. I talk about the responsibility behind it. And that's the key word here. If you are responsible, I believe that an airplane, um, an airport is a safer environment than your indoor dining experience. Uh, and that traveling can be done safely if you are responsible. 
And so what, what have you found the best ways to mitigate the risk while staying true to your purpose and your, yeah, your purpose as a travel content creator? Yep. So perfect example, I was in uh, Mexico last month. Uh, Mexico indeed is a high advisory from the CDC. Um, CDC gives recommendations for people not to travel. At the same time, CDC has a huge list of recommendations for people that are traveling. Um, so Mexico, for example, the hotel where I stayed, it was operating at 30% occupancy. So when I speak of responsible travel, I speak of things like I quarantined for 10 days before getting a PCR test, before arriving to Mexico. Needless to say, all the proper precautions were taken in the airport, in the airplane. After we got off, we got tested again. The hotel was operating at 30% occupancy. We picked it specifically because we did not want to be around too many people and we were not. We got tested before we left Mexico. We came back to New York. We quarantined again in New York. We got tested again in New York after quarantine. We were negative. We followed absolutely all of the safety procedures that the CDC has listed on their website. Karsten, um, you recently shared really beautiful imagery of your Black Girl Magic Wines campaign that you shot. And I saw there was like a little addition, disclaimer, if you will, that was like, now before you ask, we took every precaution from testing to temp checks. So as a commercial photographer who has to travel to far flung places for work, um, how have the opportunities um, first, like in terms of your sponsorship and your contract change regarding your safety and the safety of others in your crew? Yeah, no, so for that shoot, you know, in particular, I, and I'm sure we've all gotten it because I, I keep up with multi you guys, especially Tanika's like work. I, I love it. So I know that we get uh, harassed often for, you know, uh, for different um, different posts. So instead of like trying to battle everyone in the comments, I just wanted them to know that we took every single precaution. And you know, even months now, or maybe like two months after the shoot, no one has gotten sick. We've taken every single thing. We've gotten tested days before the shoot. We have temp checks, you know, at, on arrival. We even ask that if you feel any sort of way, like as you wake up, that you just don't show up to set, right? So we are just trying to make sure that everyone is safe and that everyone uh, is taking as many precautions as possible to maintain the safety of themselves as well as everyone else that's on set. So that's a, a pretty big thing as as far as work goes and how the contracts have gone. Obviously, a I miss travel. Um, there's a lot of places that I would like to go, um, but I guess if you factor in the quarantine plus the time of stay, you're looking at like a month of travel, and you know <laughs> it's kind of hard to do that with a family and a three year old. So a lot of the opportunities that have come back. Um, and I guess this is a testament to just documenting and taking those trips early on in my career was the clients are coming back for some of the older imagery, right? Like they, they're unable to create it because of all these different lockdowns and restrictions. So they're actually just going back and buying some of the work from your archive, whether that be old photos or old video. And that seemed to be helping. Uh, on top of that, I guess we are now also recreating scenes from your favorite locations in <laughs> in Brooklyn uh, in the middle of, you know, December. So, um, you know, be on the lookout for an Italian style villa, you know, it's Brooklyn, it's Prospect Park, but nobody will know the difference. Exactly. But, you know. um, Tanika, your content this year has, of course, been about travel, but also about Black Lives Matter, um, mental health. And while you might not put a lot in your comment, you do battle it. I mean, in the caption, you do battle in those comment sections sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what have you learned from your followers as you've been engaging with them um, regarding all of these issues this year? And, in and has that changed in terms of what you produce because they're being way more vocal about what they want to see from you? So, you know, with Black Lives Matter and everything that it continues to happen and the issue brain being brought to light this summer. Um, I realized that me and my Instagram family went through it together. Um, you know, yes, I don't put a lot in my captions, but in my stories, we talk in my message, we talk and we were all going through it. We were all, you know, I, I'll wake up some days and I'm tired and I didn't understand why I was tired or I'll have a headache 
or I didn't want to eat. And it was all these trauma that I didn't know that I had. And, um, you know, seeing brands that in the past wanted to book me, but they were not an ally. They didn't post anything. They didn't show any concern. Um, it was heartbreaking. And my followers were very vocal and they supported me. They showed me that they were going through the same thing. Um, we kind of like stood together and they checked on me. I had, I was, it was about two months that I didn't post. They were checking on me. I realized I really do have a family. And I realized that I have a responsibility to them to tell them like how I feel, where I stand in certain situations. Um, and also to support them and know that we're gonna be okay. You know, we have each other. If you have any issues, message me. If you're going through it, I'm going through it, message me. Let's talk about this. Let's get through this. So I like for a long time, I didn't consider myself an influencer. Um, you know, traveling, being a producer and working with tourism boards to produce content for like their website or helping other content creators produce content. I didn't see myself as an influencer, but when my followers started asking me questions or checking on me or saying, hey, I see St. Lucia's open. How, how do I get to St. Lucia? What do I need to do? I'm like, okay, maybe I am an influencer. Um, let me start being a little more vocal. Let me let my family know that I, I'm, I'm there for them. If anything is going on, if you have any dark thoughts, like it was very hard this year. 2020 was a year that you needed your family. You needed, like you needed someone to talk to. Absolutely. And I think the, for a lot of us, the online community has been an extension of our families. Um, yes. Really interesting what you just said. And I want to ask all of the panelists this. Um, when did you start? When did you consider yourself an influencer, Alana? I'll start with you. Oh, uh, I, I never really used that term, to be honest. Like I was always just a writer, you know, I was writing about my experiences and and I never even thought that they were necessarily unusual. So at the point when people started really sending me these mass emails of, can you give me advice on this? Can you give me advice on that? Um, I think that's when I started developing, you know, and I still have imposter syndrome every day. And I'm sure that that's something that all of us deal with at some point or another. Um, but I, I think that once once the email started rolling in, that's when I, when I knew that A, I have a responsibility um, you know, even like right now to promote safety, to promote this, to promote that. So yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Eric, what about you? When did you re realize that you turned an influencer? Um, but yeah, probably a year into travel writing when I would start hearing that people had booked destinations or hotels or activities or whatever that I had recommended. Um, it was really cool. Cause like I said, I, I wanted to do this to show people where to go with your kids that you haven't thought about what, what's amazing out there that, that you know is not disneyland is not even maybe london or paris but but beyond that where your kids are going to have an amazing time and, and nobody's really taking their kids there because everyone in the world has kids so so everywhere can be kid friendly and, and there were so many places that were off the radar so when, when i started getting that feedback that, that people were going places and i guess that really cemented my my decision never to write about anywhere that I haven't been personally or, or even to work with a company if I haven't used their products because if, if people are taking my advice on this then I better have first-hand experience with it and so yeah as I'm sure everyone does we get requests all the time from from destinations that want us to post or, or get people to go there and I'm like I can't I can't recommend your your safari company because I haven't used it you know you're probably really good but until we, we can actually get over there and, and use you, I, I can't tell people to book you. So, yeah. 100%, I totally agree with that. We all get messages all the time, just like a quick promo, but yeah, you, you never know. Kenny, what about you, Karsten? <laughs> I think that, um, I don't even think there was a term for it yet, but uh, when MySpace was actually first like <laughs> popping up, you know, um, <laughs> I actually had a, <laughs> yeah. Although I'm, I'm a little bit old, you know, don't, black don't crack, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was during the MySpace days, but, uh, you know, as a sponsored athlete, um, there was always videos that would pop up on DVD and on VHS. And we had people from 
all over the globe actually reaching out and asking us about different bike parts or asking us about riding in New York City and just our experiences and how that goes. So that's when I first started paying attention to the fact that there are people that value your opinion on, on what you're doing and the products that you purchase or the experiences that you have. So I think that there is a massive responsibility that comes with that. And it wasn't until this year or maybe the last like 10 years that it became influencer or influencing. But prior to that, um, I don't even know what it was called. I just thought, uh, I guess people just thought it was cool, right? Like that's what you were at the time. So before you were an influencer, you were always cool. And I think <laughs> that's when you kind of find out. Absolutely. I definitely agree. I was the one whose friends came to you to book travel. And I don't think I realized it as much until a, a food tour company in Israel wrote to me about an article I wrote and how much traffic and, and business they got afterwards. And then I, I definitely felt like a, a bigger responsibility to make sure it's okay. And also to speak out where I like, I like this place, they were paying for my trip, but I had this weird in incident there and I, I'm sure a lot of you have been in that position where they're paying for your trip but like this part wasn't great and how you communicate that and be true to the to your audience but also they're like kind of they're signing your checks at the end of the day too and so it's that that weird dichotomy that we definitely have to balance for sure sure um, and so I wanted to then now talk about the big 2020 pivot that we're all doing no matter what industry you're in. Um, just to 2020 travel in numbers, like travel and tourism revenue is down 42%. Um, and originally the 2020 forecast was $712 billion. Actual 2020 forecast came out to $396 billion. Um, world employment loss in travel and tourism, it was 100 Point eight million jobs were lost um, in they or they just they calculated that in August of 2020 and three to eight trillion dollars before tourism and as expenditures returned to pre-COVID levels and they're saying recovery to 2019 levels might be as late as 2024. Um, I know that was something that I saw firsthand being in Italy this fall and summer in late in the Lake Como area, um, I was chatting with a, a PR head at a hotel and she mentioned to me that a lot of the other hotels in the area didn't even bother opening because Americans couldn't come to Europe. And they really felt the hit of the loss of that American dollar in particular with in Italy. Um, Travel and Leisure's destination of the year for 2021 that I contributed to was in was Italy and there's such a Americans love going to Italy. I know that's been definitely hard for people. Um, Eric, I love your hashtag about take your kids everywhere. And as a travel and influencer and writer, I've been on panels like regarding never date a traveler. So seeing your traveling family has always been like hashtag goals to me that the whole family is doing it. And you've been road tripping with your kids. I, I actually had two questions about that because you were saying you wanted to be an expert um, in the travel and travel family space. Was that like a talk you had with your family? Did your kids sign on board and say, okay, we're good. I'll be in your travel content. How'd that, how'd that come off? Um, no, they would say that they had absolutely no say in it at all. <laughs> um, and that some travel is good and that a lot of travel isn't necessarily better. And so I think for a few years, they were really enjoying uh, still traveling and like, hey, you know, Manitoba invited us up there. Do you want to, which kid wants to go with me? And we're going to see polar bears and stuff. And, and, and it was kind of fun. And I think that that has lost it, its luster a little bit over the years where it's like, yeah, I'd rather be at home with my friends. I don't really feel like doing that. And so it, it has changed the, the campaigns that I can accept if they're really based around family travel. It's funny how quickly, I mean, it's cliched, but how quickly my kids have gotten older and and uh, yeah 10 years ago we were we could go to hawaii and i could see all these facebook you know reminders of what happened on this day 10 years ago 12 years ago or whatever and it was these leisurely vacations because we didn't have school to worry about or anything else and i was doing my healthcare job remotely or i could be on my laptop whatever and and all of a sudden now it's real life and my kids are in two different schools with two different vacation schedules 
And so, yeah, so the kids never really got a say in that. Um, I never did video because I didn't want to really impact our trips more than I already was. I didn't want to be in front of my computer for an hour at night editing videos. I'd rather be with my kids. Um, but even just the, hey, can you stay at that little overlook for 10 more seconds while I take five more pictures or whatever? I think that's gotten really old to them really quickly and they don't want to be influencer kids. Adopt me. <laughs> I'm up for adoption. <laughs> I get that a lot. I'll take it. I'll come with you. Um, and so in terms of the ro road tripping this year, and I'm guessing they did a lot of virtual learning. How has that impact to your content creating with them especially with you just saying like they kind of got over it fast have they been more down to take trips since their virtual learning i think the road trips were really fun because even even though it was kind of based on on selling a house and needing to move stuff back and forth like i took all three kids with me for at least one or two different trips uh, among the five and yeah, we, we, we looked for those amazing places in the U.S. that we had never been before, like all of these national parks in Utah that are stunning that I've always just driven past if I've been driving through Utah or whatever or flying over when I'm going to Italy. And, and so we really made the most of it. Um, like I said, we were smart. We booked cabins. We, we tried to visit national parks like on weekdays where, where they weren't quite as crowded or whatever. Um, kind of opted more for Colorado mountain towns where everyone is really good with mask wearing instead of, you know, say central Arizona where people really weren't. Um, but, but it was really cool. I mean, I think we did 14 national park stops over the course of the summer and yeah, totally like Alona was saying, felt safe doing it, um, maintained all of our precautions. And, and I think legitimately if the kids had to be honest about it they would say that they enjoyed those trips and that we had we had fun and, and had some really good hikes saw some really cool things that's awesome um and like you were saying carson a little bit earlier that you've been using throwbacks flashbacks um kind of mixing it up between what city it, it, am I in? Um, what are what you think the best ways to keep the travel narrative going when we have these restrictions and health and safety restrictions in place? Um, I mean, honestly, revisiting some of those images, it it's reinvigorating, right? So, um, you know, to his point of just like those flashbacks that pop up on Instagram, it, it's a fun reminder of where you've been. And, you know, even sometimes a great reminder of where you would like to go once this opens up again. I used to get in so much trouble for accepting every single trip because I love traveling. So, <laughs> but right now with the restrictions in place, I think that uh, a lot of local travel is really cool, right? So there are a lot of cabins like New York, for instance, there were so many uh, New Yorkers that have never left the five boroughs. So once they actually ventured upstate to the Catskills, all of a sudden it was a whole new world for them. You're in the woods, you are you have this nice cabin. There are ski, uh, ski slopes up there, you know, there's just like uh, great waterfalls. And then even the, the states that are around New York City, um, I've traveled extensively throughout um, the US. So I know what's on the East Coast and the Pacific Northwest and then South. So I think that with the restrictions in place, it's really cool to take, you know, a weekend getaway or even a week just to like get out and see things. It's fun to see the way of life in every state, but it also makes you uh, remember why you love New York City in the first place. So thanks. Yeah, definitely <laughs> understand that. I've been, I've been really enjoying being in New York for a long period of time during the pandemic. Yeah, I was itching to travel, but I, I was excited to be here and be here for longer. I don't know if any of you guys have gotten full on travel fatigue. I, when I first started, I was saying yes to everything. And I had like a five or I had to be at the airport at JFK at 6 a.m. this one morning a few years ago. And my best friend was, was being celebrated by a major magazine and I had to leave for dinner early. And I remember waking up the next morning or like later on that night at 4 a.m. to get ready for the airport. I almost started crying in the shower because I was so <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> and you can't really and I think in a certain space like travel creators get it but you know it's it's kind of a woe is me complaint. I, I was going to need this and so I was like what am I crying about going to need this? But it was it, so has anyone else had an experience? Tanika you have you had an experience like that? Yes. You know what it is? I think a lot of people don't realize like this is my full time job. You know, this is what I do to make a living. And um, they just see it as, oh, you're traveling the world. You're having fun. Um, you know, they see it as a hobby. 
And um, I have breakdowns. I have breakdowns and I have to be, sometimes I don't sleep um, because I have to get up and I have to make sure that I'm at the location at sunset because you don't want the crowds. And I have to interview people and I have to always be on and always have energy and always up for it. It's not like in my, my itinerary is usually packed and I don't have time for breaks. And when I, when I do have a break, it's a quick nap, grab some food and you know, it's on to the next location. So this is a job <laughs> and just like any occupation, you get tired and you get burnt out. And even when I'm burnt out, I have to get up and I have to still create and I have to be creative and just being creative is energy. Absolutely. And I've said it better. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I need to get like, my kids up too and, and, and get exactly. two or three of them. I'm like, okay, this tour company is sponsoring us. We have to go out there. They're like, but we don't want to. I'm like, we have to, you have to. And so I think that that's part of the thing that's kind of worked against me the last couple of years is that, yeah, they get tired of that. And you have kids, so you have two jobs. So yeah. Mm -hmm. not, you know, that's two full-time jobs. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. you're expected because they're not signing the contracts themselves. You are. Mm -hmm. and so it's a little, you have to like manage them and then manage the, the contract. That's so true. Oh, yeah. wow. I was going to say that also too, like, um, you know, to your point now is that sometimes it's um, it's like reverse FOMO, right? Like you, all your friends are like, man, you're going to this beautiful place. And you're like, damn, I wish you guys could be here with me. You know, like sometimes that happens. But also, uh, to Tanika's point, the fatigue, like there have been a, a few trips that I've been on where the tourism board just packs so much that you basically just drop your bag off in the hotel and then they send you on 20 different excursions. So a lot of times it's just happening so fast that it's almost like you don't get to enjoy it or it feels like a luxury prison where you don't get to leave. So there's like a fine balance there. Like you are seeing things, but it's always best to just try to extend the time when you can do like things that you want or negotiate like the time in between just to relax because it's a lot. <laughs> I think people underestimate that as well. Looking ahead to 2021, um, I wanted to share the top uh, for the poll. What's the top desired American destination travelers want to visit in the next 12 months? And actually, people really wanted to go to Florida. That's what Americans, really? yeah, that's that's where Americans wanted to go. I thought a lot of people were going to Florida. I thought that was part of the problem there. But it seems like a lot of people really want to go to Florida. And yeah, that's that's where the big destination is by the top. And the next one after Florida is Las Vegas and then Hawaii. So yeah, that was something that I thought was cool. But looking ahead to 2021, uh, we were discussing about travel tourism and what what we're hoping to see in 2021. You know, we can't predict the the effect of the pandemic and the great and the big pivot that we're all having to do. Um, Britt, Alona, you have you've had to create a lot of content in 2020 regarding the safety precautions, or you have created a lot of content regarding the safety precautions, like the air filtration systems um, and what air the measures that airlines are taking. Do you feel that under the these circumstances that it suddenly has allowed for you to become a holistic connoisseur of the airline experience, like sudden before? I, at least I know I didn't really think about the air filtration system in airplanes. Um, have you found that suddenly you're an expert or you have, you've had to become an expert on this thing? That's funny. Um, I, I love to learn. Like I'm a numbers girl. I'm an av geek. My learning curve this year has been like exponential through the roof. And anyone that follows me, they know that I love to sprinkle facts and, and all, all that stuff into my posts. Um, and listen, like I said, like we were in limbo for a long time, but then we, we started seeing more studies. We started seeing more numbers and people still bombard me about aircraft safety. And when there's so much information available, it's hard to sift through. I posted about HEPA filters and aircraft back in June saying that they basically kill out 99% of particles in the airplane. I got so much pushback. I lost literally like 900 followers that day saying that I'm promoting nonsense. And now the United study came out, the Harvard study came out and some of these people literally came back and they were like, listen, like I, it was an emotional time. I'm sorry, you know? Um, Tanika, I think you mentioned mental health. 
uh, that's a very, very important topic. Uh, you know, we can't underestimate the people that sat in their one bedroom apartments for four or five months at a time, the people that lost their jobs, the people that couldn't put food on the table, you know, the people that maybe now have the means to travel and just simply want a mental break. And if they could do so safely, maybe they don't want to go to a cabin in upstate. Maybe they want to go to a beach in Aruba and they can, and they deserve it. You know, I, I have so many friends, even in the medical space now that are traveling, not posting about it because they're scared to be travel shamed, even though like that they're taking all the necessary precautions, you know, before their trips. And I'm, I'm actually very excited for 2021. I think that this will be the year that people will learn a lot. Um, they will be safer than ever. And I, I genuinely hope to promote that level of comfort for everyone. Um, going back to what we were talking about, ethical tourism, um, not every beautiful destination is we want to make sure that it doesn't become an overdeveloped tourist trap. Um, and that highlighting the gems that are run by locals um, who depend on tourism to stay afloat. Uh, Tanika, what do you think the best ways for travelers to give to back to these communities that are have been hit hard by the pandemic moving forward in 2021? Um, you know, one thing with COVID, it's the small businesses who have suffered. It's not the Walmarts, it's not the Targets, it's not the Hyatts, it's not these big corporations, it's the small business. And you have some places like a whole box or, you know, even in Jamaica, you know, I have um, a driver that I work with in Jamaica and he's like, listen, he, he sent me a WhatsApp. He's like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it December for my kids. It's like, you know, it's been so, so hard. If you have anyone, please send any work my way because he depends on tourism. That's how he pays his bills. So. Like try if you if you are going to travel, try to stick to small businesses. Try to stick to um, you know indigenous businesses, because you have a lot of like the Hyatts and these big corporations um, that go in. They go to small islands. They take over. They don't give back to the locals. They're paying these locals pennies and sucking the community dry, causing the local property to increase. And then you have expats who come in and build up around that area. Meanwhile, you know, the locals, they're just, they're getting dried out. They're not making any money. They can't afford to put their kids into the local schools, you know, eat at the local spots make sure that you know you're tipping your drivers you're wearing COVID. tip them a little extra tip them a little extra so that they can afford the mass so they can afford the the supplies so that they're safe absolutely and what do you recommend for us as creators to make sure we get the word out about going local and what we should be doing to help these local communities tag businesses also creators donate your services. Like I work with small, with small businesses, like, Hey, you know, I'll give you some photos. Let's work together. You know, my team will come and take some photos for them. Um, and they'll love you. They'll support you. Next time you come in, they're going to make sure that you're good. They're going to take care of you. Um, show love. If you're, if this is what you do, if you're in travel, we're a family and that starts with the small businesses that starts with the locals absolutely so i'm going to make way for a little bit of q a now um, before that i wanted to share the results for the poll for creators about what was the top channel for travel inspiration among americans most ready to travel and i know a lot of us thought it was instagram but it's actually facebook um, that leads the way and Instagram comes in as number four. So first it's Facebook, then it's websites like they found via a search or engine, then email and then Instagram. Um, and so that I thought was super interesting because I, I would assume that it was Instagram as well, or I get the website bit, but I'm curious about that email part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about like if they just got an email about a destination. That's that's definitely that's yeah, that's definitely interesting. So leading the way about the about our Q and A. 
for a lot of us, or a lot of us have just found out about the COVID vaccine that is being rolled out. Um, what were some of, what are the ways that you foresee travel changing in terms of how many people get vaccinated? I know a few weeks ago, there was a story with, I think it was Qantas Airways in Australia that said that they would require people to vac be vaccinated um, before boarding the plane. So um, who wants to start? Skinny, do you want to take it? Well, uh, yeah, I, I'll jump in. So, uh, my mom works in the medical field. So, you know, I'll basically wait to hear from, uh, <laughs> from her mouth how she feels about the results of these vaccines and then I can move forward with that. But I do foresee um, a lot of countries and um, a lot of companies as well just making it mandatory for the vaccine. Um, you do have mixed reviews. Basically on one side, it's a money play. Obviously on the other side, it's for safety concerns. So it's, it's gonna be a really interesting uh, next few years uh, on how this is approached. But I do foresee this being some sort of mandatory requirement while traveling. Anyone else want to jump in? Hop in. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, you know, educate yourself. Definitely. I've been educating myself, trying to get as much information. Um, you know, as a Black woman in America, dealing with vaccinations in the past, um, they have killed us. You know, we've, um, it's a lot of trickery. It's a, a, um, a lot of false information that was fed to us. Um, so yes, please, you know, do your do do your research, educate yourself. Um, when it comes to travel, um, you know, I do hear I hear a lot of stuff, but I also know that this is the media. You know, a lot of information. Um, even they've been creating false um, headlines and making it look like it's real. So definitely go to the tourism board ask them you can send an email you can talk directly to someone you can send an email to the airlines talk directly to someone to find out um you know if the vaccination is needed or if it's not because there's so much information so many people just take one little thing and then run with it without doing the research themselves eric in another in another note are you, do you think there are any, are there any particular travel insurance, luggage protection, concierge service, or anything that you would recommend for up and coming creators that they should be using as resources? Like um, no, I mean, I'm probably the wrong person to ask about this because we don't, we've never gotten travel insurance. So I, I'm the, the odd man out when I see posts all the time, like, oh, you have to get travel insurance. Um, we've always been travelers that, that if there's any trip that may not take place, we use uh, frequent flyer miles that can get totally refunded with no penalty. Wow. We'll, we'll use refundable hotel reservations, um, all of that good stuff so that there's very little risk and, and, and there's really no need then for insurance. So, and, and I've never regretted it, but I'm definitely not telling people not to get insurance. Um, but no, I think somebody else may be able to jump in a little bit better than me. Yeah, I'd like to jump in actually perfect timing because one of my best friends and his girlfriend got into an ATV accident in Dominican Republic two days ago, um, booked it not on a travel credit card, did not have medical insurance. They're getting flown out chartered right now for $20,000, not even to New York from Dominican, but to Florida. So if, if this is not like a news flash for everyone about the things that can happen, either don't go on ATVs or do any sort of activity that could put you at risk or always, always at the very least um, book your trips with a travel credit card, like Chase Sapphire Reserve, for example, has insurance included for trips. Um, more than ever, you will need it now, uh, especially in times of COVID, especially when you need to get testing abroad, for example, mm -hmm. or if God forbid something happens, this is the time to really, you know, read that fine print. If you're not 100% sure, uh, reach out to the credit card, reach out to the airline and, and make sure you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Because I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of that as, as, as travel starts ramping up. Um, people will be abroad, they're going to get stuck in these weird situations. Um, you know, we're all stuck here, even the people that are working customer service, like it's also their job and they're just doing their jobs. So you should do your part as well and do your research before you book, before you travel to be safe. 
But has anyone seen any noteworthy travel scams or things to watch out for that we should be warning people about? Um, there was a travel scam. This wasn't during the time of COVID, uh, presumably, but I believe a year ago or two, um, there was uh, like a PR or influencer company that reached out to influencers for a press trip. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was to Thailand. Uh, essentially, you had to cover your own flights and you would come out there and then they would reimburse you for certain expenses. Um, one of the influencers, they ended up sending in their passport and all their information. But then when they arrived there, there was no one there to meet them. Uh, so I always say like I have you, you know, up and coming bloggers reach out to me from time to time asking, you know, does this sound legit? If it's too good to be true. <laughs> most likely is too good to be true. You know, whenever anyone reaches out, even like via DM, I always ask, please send me an email. You know, let's be kind of professional about this. If we're really talking about a trip or any like financial opportunity, it shouldn't happen over a, over a direct message, you know? So um, yeah, if it's too good to be true, if they ask you for money up front and they're going to reimburse you, unless you have a contract, unless you've read over that contract, you have a paper trail on email, don't jump into it, you know, it's, it's not worth it. So right now in Mexico, there is an Airbnb scam, um, especially for groups of women. Um, there, um, there is a host um, and I can't, I don't remember his name. Um, what I'll do is I'll post it in my stories. I'll look up the article and I'll post it in my stories. But basically um, they would take vacant houses and post it as Airbnbs and put cameras in the houses. And they would also um, steal items from the house. And um, sometimes um, you'll have men just walk into the house. Um, I did see that on Instagram. A lot of females experienced that and it was a certain host. So I'll post all of that in my stories. Um, just be careful because there is, it's, it's a chaotic time and people take advantage. Plus people aren't making money right now. So people are going to look for any way to take advantage of other people. So definitely, you know, just be safe, share your location with your family, with, um, you know, your friends, um, communicate with your family and friends, always let them know what you're doing. Um, we're at time, but I wanted to end on a, on a positive note. Um, Karsten, 2021 travel. What can we expect as influencers? What do we What do we have to look forward to? Man, I don't know. I feel like I, I, I tend to take the, uh, you know, a different path than others. But uh, I foresee a lot more travel by automobile. I think that you know, seeing the the world from car, just from even if it's state to state, or even if you're in a different country, just going from country to country, those little places in between are what really tell the story sometimes. So I foresee a lot more travel by car. Um, I see uh, maybe even a lot more staycations happening. Uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, deals that are happening where you might be able to stay at one of your favorite locations in the city, or maybe even just experience a place that has been on your bucket list for a long time, but uh, because of financial reasons or maybe even time restraints, you've never had a chance to do so. So definitely a lot of staycations, a lot of travel by automobile, and the occasional. Um, off the grid trip that uh, you know you try not to be travel shamed about. So maybe that happens in there. Alana, any place you're hoping and looking forward to going in 2021? Well, I hope Europe opens up uh, just because honestly, you know, being in this type of space, you end up making so many friends and so many really deep and powerful connections abroad so that whenever you come home, it's like you're always, you know, there's a void it needs to be filled and for me that void is in Europe and it's in the Middle East and um, you know as much as I have so many places that I want to explore I I really need those connections to to physically be there in my life so I hope uh, I hope we can safely go to those places. What about you Eric any place that you're looking forward to traveling with your family next year? Um, what we've booked right now is it's actually, it was last June we had it booked and then we rebooked for August and then that didn't happen. And so we rebooked the entire thing for next May and June. Uh, but we're supposed to fly over to Corfu. We're doing a small sailing ship from Corfu to Dubrovnik through Italy and Albania. 
and, and Montenegro, um, then flying to the Greek islands for about two weeks in Santorini and Naxos, um, then off to Schloss Elmau uh, outside of Munich and Innsbruck, um, and then back home. So it's about a month and it, it should be really fun if we can do it. And it'll be really interesting with vaccines because even if we have vaccines, we could still be carriers. And I don't know that those Greek islands are gonna want people if they haven't been able to vaccinate everyone. And, and so, um, fingers crossed, like I said, we, uh, I'm not going to book anything that's not totally refundable or that we can't continually move forward until we can get over there. But yeah, no, my, I love Italy. I love Europe and Greece. And so we are really hoping to get back over. I just saw that on your feed and you were saying that all of the companies have been pretty great about refunds, um, or being able to move the trip and things like that. Right. Yep. Everyone. And, and, and yeah, that's part of giving back to these small businesses that, that if a little inn owner on Santorini is like begging you and saying, you know, I can give you a refund, but please, 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 if there's any way that you can just leave it on deposit with me and, and indefinitely come back or whatever, I'll give you the same rate or whatever, really work with you. I'm like, who am I to say no to that? Like, like and then likewise, like Instagram this year has been fun because I've been trying to give back to all these other little small businesses that I've worked with or just that I like around the world like I, it, it costs me nothing to put up an instagram post saying hey when travel recovers please book with this tour company in morocco or please stay at this little hotel in beirut or whatever because you know it, it's so easy for me to do it and it might really help them bounce back faster that's a really good point sorry Eric. I, I know we're at time but um you know if you're booking anything now even if it's flights as long as you're booking with carriers that have you know refundable tickets you're actually giving them a lot of cash flow if you're booking now and it's super, super helpful to small businesses, to airlines in general. Um, you know, if you have that reservation, even if it's for six months ahead or a year ahead, you're giving them that cash flow to potentially operate during this time, you know, and obviously make sure that it is refundable because you're not donating to anyone, but um, it, it is a good time to book for the future. A lot of places have been offering great deals now to go towards the towards future travel so like you just said that's a great way to give them cash flow right now to sustain until when they are ready to open and because unfortunately we won't necessarily see some of those these businesses post pandemic exactly and so that's been it's been so great talking to all of you thank you so much thank, thank you so much for thank you one. have a great mm -hmm. rest of your day thank you so much Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>